Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here in the Manila Major Qualifiers Chinese section, and um, I, I wanted to take a little moment real quickly here to, to talk a little bit for anybody that's watching and maybe not the most familiar with the scene uh, in China because it's all a little bit complicated. It's all a little bit crazy. Um, I, I just wanted to break down something. I was talking to some of the people that are involved in the Chinese scene, um, some of the translators, some of the, the players themselves. I got a guy that speaks Chinese back home that I know, and he translates some stuff for me as well. And the consensus that I've gotten is that after the Shanghai Major, there's been a very big increase in the amount of energy and effort that's been put into training. I've been looking at some of these players' profiles, they conspicuously are always in a game, but they have no recent games that are pubs. So everybody's scrimming. There's like a lot of effort. And I, I really think that um, this series right here is a bit of an encapsulation of what we might end up seeing just based upon like how strong Nubia have looked. And CDC Youth have also not looked bad either. So mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if you want to echo any of that, but China Dota is looking strong in our final game. I just wanted to say keep your eye out for it tomorrow uh, as we finish up the group stages. Absolutely, because honestly, like you compare what we saw in terms of the Shanghai Major preparation, where after MDL, everybody fell off the grid completely. Like every team that I researched leading into the Shanghai Major had one or two players that was playing ranked like crazy, but only one or two, right. and the others were doing absolutely nothing. So that's not time dedicated to scrims. That's not time just in generally, just general performance and preparation and working together as a unit. That's, you know, time off essentially is what yeah. that is, with the exception of a couple of players who are just so dedicated to the game. Right. So I feel like with this, they, they have these new rosters. Of course, they have this new patch. There's so much incentive to learn and improve in preparation for not only the Manila Major, but also for TI, because these rosters are locked past the international. So there's a lot more money on the line. I mean, obviously, we don't know the full number, but a lot of money on the line uh, in total over this uh, season, I guess you can call it. And there's just that much more interest for them to continue to thrive. Now, we did get to see just now CDEC Youth go up against Newby. And to be honest, it was a stomp. It was straight up CDEC Youth were outgunned, outmatched in so many different ways, lane to lane. And going into the mid game, they had n neither a hope nor a prayer of bringing it back despite their best efforts. Like, Newby just wouldn't play into the style that they wanted them to. And as such, CDEC Youth had very limited comeback potential, no matter how much gold they can get back. So the way I look at it now is CDEC Youth are not a slouch of a team. Like, just because they have youth on their name, they're a bunch of younger guys, or they're the, the B squad of CDEC, these guys have still brought so much strength to the Chinese scene. I mean, they are 2-2 two -two I, with IG, who I think is one of the more high potential teams in the other group. Mm -hmm. And, or, well, actually, it's in this group. but And they also have matched up decently against Tong Fu. But when we're looking at them versus Newbie, it just feels like Newbie have it out for them. Right now, they are now 0-5 and five against Newbie in the past month. And it's going to be taking a, a real mentality shift going into this next game for them to try to bring it to a draw, which they're, they're hungry for. I'm sure of it. So let's go ahead and get into the draft oh, yeah. and check out exactly what we have in store for game number two. Two. Well, and as you can see here, the quick and early IO pick. This is the other thing they can do. You want to get rid of the Enchantress? Fine. Newbie are actually going to be the ones that end up banning out the Doom. Mm -hmm. They were the first, or ex excuse me, the second pick this time around. So it makes a lot of sense. They don't want to have to give that one away. And we've got ourselves. Oh wait. Yeah, yeah, they were the second pick. Excuse me. Um, Lion, incredibly strong. IO Batrider into the Darkseer. We don't see Avenge as of yet. Uh, or the Oracle, I'm kind of wondering if Newbie want to take the Venge themselves. I don't see them taking the Oracle just because that would leave them with two extremely defensive supports unless they're trying to run something a little bit sketchy. Um, but yeah, the Darks here are a little bit of an interesting pick as well. Yeah, so just to talk a little bit about the high impact potential of this hero, the Wisp here, uh, we got to just kind of look at the records, look at the performance as a whole. Uh, like, you look back at Victoria, he didn't do too bad on the hero, but he did make a couple of uh, significant errors that did lead to at least one or two deaths on his own team. So compare his record of now three and two in recent times with the Wisp to Kaka, uh, who Jesus. essentially, like, I say Kaka, <laughs> and the next word that comes out of my mouth instinctively is Wisp. Yeah. Kaka, Wisp, Kaka, or Spirit, those are the two ways that you can end that phrase. So Kaka, <laughs> Wisp, in 6.86 was 9 and 1. But 
across all patches just in his entire competitive history he's 44 and 28 so he has played a lot of this hero he's played a lot of it well against some really tough teams and now he's going to be bringing it to bear here in the first phase and of course on top of that you're going to be creating an opportunity for k phoenix not that much bat performance recently but it's also one of those heroes that you can see very often in Chinese ranked games and pubs, and it's also, even if he has only played a handful of games with it recently, it's like riding a bike. This hero, he generates his own momentum. As long as you can get through the laning stage, you could do a lot of work uh, and create many, many opportunities for your team. I'm loving the Disruptor pick, too. You've already got these heroes that are great at being able to push the, the, the pressure of the game. you got Batrider. Uh, more often than not, as long as your laning stage isn't absolutely terrible, and it, it has the potential to be with the Lion in it. If they pick another really strong laning hero, they could end up running into some issues, but you can start to get incredibly aggressive. Then you start putting into situations where you're, uh, you're taking towers or at least starting to posture to take towers. Somebody tries to TP back to defend it. You glimpse them on away. On top of that, just in general, having to deal with the idea of glimpsing into a static field and uh, it, it, a kinetic storm in sack field. Excuse me. It's getting late here at night. We're at the final hours of the hub. Um, it's just not something you want to do. But Nubia are actually going to run the Bristle IO strategy. All right. All right. So this is going to be changing the dynamic quite a bit here. I think this means it's actually going to be Moo taking the Batrider to mid because the way that Nubi run Bristle Wisp is completely different than when they run Wisp just with a random agility core or some strength course. Uh, the Bristleback is going to be dual offlane. K Phoenix with Kaka going and pressuring the C Duck Youth safe lane. With that, they're still going to have a pretty much any co good core in the safe lane with the disruptor and they're going to be able to create opportunities there but this will also allow the bat rider to really build himself up in terms of uh using up his mana very actively um controlling the runes which can create uh more opportunities and and generate generally speaking more kill momentum early and i mean new city youth had to have seen this coming i mean k phoenix is four and one on the bristleback last patch and it's his third second most played hero so he is very known for it. He's going to be bringing it here. And c Deck Youth, they think about it up until the last second of reserve time. They're going to commit to the Medusa here. This is kind of an interesting one as well. It's, it's one of those situations for me where newbie are probably... It's going to be very late in the game in terms of them being able to probably take like one or two racks before they're really going to feel safe trying to, to bum rush high ground, I would say. You've got Dark Seer for the Vacuum Wall, all the stuff that Invoker ends up throwing out there. And if you get Medusa, that amount of comeback farm, like I, I, I think the laning stage for them could be a little bit of an issue, depending upon the way that these end up working out. Um, but I, I would be slightly concerned. And the other thing is that I, I really worry that with the Batrider in the pool, they're going to end up going for like a Lincoln's first on Medusa. And I just, I, I always hate that build. It's against a Bristleback. That's what, that's what gets yeah. me. There's, there's, if you. Go Lincolns every single game on a certain hero without thinking about what you're up against, then you're going to realize very quickly that it's a useless item in some context. And up against a Bristleback with the very short cooldown and viscous nice nasal goo, stalker. it's just not a good idea. But at the same time, it is the tried and true. Whatever they commit to, the more important thing is where they position the Medusa to succeed and get her next set of items. Because really, you're not going to be doing it with one item alone no matter what you pick up. And it is going to be the Juggernaut. Okay, so I was thinking about this as an opportunity because Disruptor Jug uh, does have kill potential against the Darkseer. You could just go for early, like, essentially when Disruptor has 1 1 1. When Chuan is level 3, then Hao should be able to kill off XZ once. And then XZ probably goes in the jungle from there. So I like the idea of the Juggernaut. Is a little bit vulnerable to the Night Stalker Silence here, but he's got a pretty good backline to support him in that. Well, we've got. The last pick now as well for the side of CDEC Youth, it's going to be the Night Stalker. I always love this hero when you're trying to contend with a, a, a Bat Rider or a, a Wisp in some cases as well. It's just that hero that shuts down the vision. You need it so desperately on Moo to make sure that you're going to be able to find uh, those pickoff potentials. They're going to pick off oh, the Courier. And no, this is awkward. Um, head on out. Okay, uh, yeah, for some reason I thought for a second their move had to buy it because somebody made a mistake, but no, it's not going to be uh, anything like that. It is just going to be, uh, you know, everybody's trying to get out on the map as quickly as possible. Disruptor TP's top, 
gets a lane ward down. Chuan's got that under wraps, but Fortune K Phoenix uh, does get met with confrontation, so he won't be able to place anything in the Radiant Jungle. Hmm. Well, Demon's now sitting on those two sentry wards, just going to make sure that nobody sneaks one by him. Uh, can you speak a little bit about the sort of context? What is it that this Bristleback IO strategy provides for you? Is it just go from level one, or do you need a certain amount of levels before you can really start trying to punish your opponents? It depends on how much damage Kaka is willing to soak up himself. Um, we're just with Tether alone, you have to essentially get a few auto attacks against you, either from creep aggro or otherwise, so that you can actually heal the Bristleback. Otherwise, you need at least level two. It's one zero and one for the overcharge plus tether, which generally speaking is going to be more valuable. So level two is definitely go time uh, for the Bristol IO, but right now it seems go time on the bottom rune. My goodness, there's a lot of damage that's going to be coming out. They actually only took, I think, one bounce of that Mystic Stake. It still is going to mean that Victoria here is going to get chased down somewhat. They have three stacks on two of these heroes now of the Quills and starting to boom them up a little bit more. Hey Phoenix, I don't know if he's actually going to be able to find any more, unfortunately. He doesn't have any more mana, but he should be able to find this kill on the Demon's First Blood, go in the way of Mu on the Batrider. Pretty well played. Yeah, but it's also really unfortunate because I actually had the Iron Shells out. There was actually three heroes hit by the Mystic, and I feel like that's a, a fight that they need to really get themselves involved in. But end of the day, they are going to just be giving up that First Blood, and we will see the, the runes go one for one. So the way I look at bounty runes now is there's no way that just the 100 gold from the bounty rune that spawns initially is worth any trade whatsoever. If you lose a hero's life for a bounty rune, that's a bad trade because experience matters just a little bit more here. And we are going to be seeing Kaka already going for some double stacking, already has his bottle up, and we're just going to be seeing that newbie are already kind of off to the races. But... At least for now, K Phoenix is kind of isolated by himself, and he'll have to be a little bit wary as his Observer Ward is uh, not in play here. They actually put it bottom maroon. Unfortunately, there as well, you did see that the Kaka didn't get quite both of the stacks off. The little trickster was not wanting to be cooperative that time around on the large camp. Not the biggest deal in the world, but it is something that you would love to be able to get. I'm tired of taking a look also now at this lineup in the the potential that it has to try and dive under towers and flame is just gonna die oh man uh, kaka just healing back up moo it's just too easy for him honestly uh, uh, what do you think about this invoker going for the quas wex build like this is supposed to keep you safe and it just did not do it in this case oh i feel like there is still a lot of potential value in it if you're you're worried about like the, the early push pressure tornado is a great response to a bat rider running at you just tornado co him cold snap him whenever the lasso comes out and you can really negate its potential impact. Um, I think the mobility is going to be all well and good, but I don't think the EMP is going to be that great this game by comparison. Sure, there's a low mana pool on uh, the cores, but you're going to be seeing a lot of arcane boots very early on. In fact, I expect Kaka to rush basically magic stick or magic wand and then into the arcanes and just make sure that his team always has mana. Our, the arcanes via tether will make sure that there's plenty of spells to go around and you should see two, if not three, arcane boots on the side of newbie before the CMP really starts being threatening. So here's my question then. If we're taking a look at this situation and it feels like newbie is gonna try and go for this push strat, is it on Victoria on this Night Stalker to try and make stuff happen around the map before that comes? Or do they just wanna try and sort of prepare for when the push eventually comes as opposed to trying to get aggressive. I'm not even sure I would classify anything Newbie is looking to do in the first 15 minutes as pushing. Like, uh, they obviously they'll take the top tier one if it's uh, available to them. Dark Seer, Iron Shell generally will make that not an option. But what the timing for Newbie is really when Moo gets blink, and I get this is what we talked about last game. You get the blink dagger on the Bat Rider, you set up the kills, you follow up the relocate. But I feel like not only do Newbie have more wherewithal in this game to make that happen based on already their landing configuration, but they have a really strong mid game and to an extent late game, even going up against this lineup, even going up against Wombo combos from the Dark Seer and um, Medusa scaling to the extent that she does. If Juggernaut goes to build that I expect, which uh, should just not. Oh God, in flame again, yeah. That was that was never gonna be a, a good thing. They tried to go for it, the tornado, the disengage, and that was gonna take a little bit of damage from the cold snap there, but yeah. But yeah, if the Juggernaut goes for the Manta Diffusa build that I expect, which is great for breaking Crippling Fear, great for punishing the Medusa early, 
uh, before she really comes online with all of her major items. I feel like that's the window where they start just breaking down tier twos with a single Roche, with a single Aegis. And then probably Roche number two is about the cycle where they're actually looking to break high ground. And that's only if it's convenient to them. They they actually have a lot of ways to, to play around this game. The real timing window that I'm, I'm seeing for them is they want to be able to control the map before the Night Sucker gets axed. Because then the Batrider's job is a lot harder. Mm, absolutely. Well, Victoria now is going to only have the level 3, so no silence is going to be coming out in these ganks. But they are managing to still get the D wards going. Uh, is this a play towards mid or is this a play towards bottom as far as trying to find something? Or is it just a, a go back to your lane and do stuff here? So it is going to be just an attempt to, to find a kill early, but there's no kill to be found in mid because this Batrider is happily farming himself away. Just 2-1-2 two, two in this buildup, but Kaka has been doing the w dirty work and they will be able to clear all of this out no problem at all. Muggolms, the last two stand, but they'll be brought down too. And suddenly this Batrider has over 1,500 gold. Yeah, that was also really nice. He's <laughs> able to get one last stack on it also as they're finishing it off. So the second one's going to come out. They are pinging it, and they have the scan going. So they realize what's going to happen, and instead are going to turn their sights towards the safe lane, where How is a little bit vulnerable right now. Chuan is still there to keep his eyes on him, but this might be a play as they have the Iron Shell already on Night Stalker. Oh, God, but he's actually he's solved back up. Uh, Chuan's actually going to be a nice opportunity, though. They can't really go under tower against the Disruptor, but if they can just nuke him down before he gets there, that's going to work out oh. just fine. And Kaka's there to turn it back around, though, and Hao is fished up for the moment. He's going for the Blade Fury. Nice little uh, surge away there, but not able to find anything with that smoke attempt. And that's just going to be creating space for Mu. This is the, the hero that you want the time for, and he's going to build himself up very quickly here. Uh, Cape Phoenix also at least getting the experience from the lane. He's not going to CS well against Medusa by any stretch, but he's also going to still be able to get the, essentially the full experience out of it. Well, XC out of mana, but does have a soul ring. Might need to pop it here. The only unfortunate part is if he pops it, guess what? He's already dead anyways. Doesn't matter. How Omni slash forward, and there was really no way he was ever going to get out of that one. Yeah. And uh, the Bristlebuck has his comeback methodology as well. Key Phoenix already looking at a double stacked set of Ancients. Not as great since Ancient Black Dragons did uh, get themselves that nice little aura to continuously stack armor. Ooh, mid lane. They've been able to catch him for a moment, but Flame Break is there. I think that this is still definitely going to be a kill. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, no other TP rotations were made, so Chuan not able to do enough to, to find something in return. Yeah. Kaka too involved in the top lane, his TP is still on cooldown, so even if he was in Fountain ready to TP, Tether, Overcharge, Bottle, Stick, everything you can to try to help out Mu there. It is just a dead to rise Batrider and the first successful rotation for CDQ. They need to keep this momentum rolling, but the problem is one minute li from now the night will dissipate and you can see essentially Victoria looking at Iron Talon. Oh, actually, that was a little weird. Schwan, oh, mid lane. He's getting the right clicks. Nothing doing, though. Inflame is not wanting to die for anything at this point in time. He is going to be building into an urn, so no rush for an early Midas. Normally, this is something that we'd still end up seeing. Do you think that he ends up going back for it at this point, or is it more an idea to just try and uh, become relevant earlier by trying to make something happen around the map? No, I definitely don't think this is going to be a, a Midas game for the Invoker, although it can create value. Uh, they're trying to TP in now. Kaka, can he get him out of there? They're trying to heal him up, and... Man, that, ugh. And then watch the healing ward, too. He's just going to, how's going to be full HP in no time. You would have loved to be able to find that one if you're CDC youth. This is just a very different game than what we saw for CDC youth. Similar heroes. I mean, we're looking at Batrider, Juggernaut, and Wisp. Three out of the five in a similar template, but it's just so different. And flame controlled again. They do have the EMP combo. Victoria is there trying to keep himself, uh, keep his buddy alive, but he is just going to have to settle for finding the kill. Lion is actually the one that gets the last right click on a Batrider. And so they trade one for one-ish. Um, two to five is the score. As far as who's gotten the better out of the early laning stage, I'm looking at this as oh. we have a relocate in. Going to try and die for Victoria. He just stuck around a little bit too long, and How's it going to make him pay? Night Stalker, Day Walker. That's going to be uh, an unfortunate thing for him, especially since uh, he's already behind farm. I'm almost positive that he had an Iron Town in his inventory, sold it, and then bought back a Quelling Blade. And I'm not sure if it's because he really wanted Windlace or if he made a mistake, but either way, he's now picking up the Iron Talon, and, like, it's it's so behind. Like, what? So you, can, you can buy Iron Talon level 1. 
Yeah. Boots win Lace Iron Talon doesn't feel that much better. Uh, so I really do feel like th the Night Stalker's in a weird spot. Victoria is going to have extremely limited progression. And when the, the timer for C Deck Youth's advantage in this game is when the Aghanim Scepter comes out of the Night Stalker. Right now, you've got a long time to wait with only 188 GPM on the hero. Well, and, uh, so this is my question is, what is it about this game that makes it not necessarily Midas? I always feel like that increase in terms of the number of levels is going to be the thing that you want. But like going for this, this urn here, for instance, sure, it makes him a little bit more tanky, but he's not exactly finding kills with it. He's just kind of sitting in lane. Ideally, you find a support kill. They're actually going to see a nice little tornado EMP there taking Kaka's mana away. But um, the big thing here is Urn Shadows procs Cold Snap continuously. Oh, yeah, and that is just going to catch on to his flame there. They drop down the Static Storm. He's just going to get destroyed over and over again. That's the blink reveal, at least, though. So um, you still kill off the Invoker, and now going to start to apply a little bit of pressure towards the mid lane. This is looking really rough. It absolutely is. But I just feel like they have to stand their ground at some point. They have to be able to find a way to uh, turn a couple of engagements. Not every engagement. Obviously, Newbie are already starting to completely outclass Cedic Youth when it comes to just moving off the map, early skirmishes, and now push pressure. But I do feel like Cedic Youth just need to build so that they can get just a few hero, hero kills every once in a while so that they can still at least bring the momentum back yeah. to just a, just a small extent. And the most common way for an, a Wex Voker to do that is actually building an Orchid. See if he's going to be able to get that type of farm to be able to put himself in that position. Uh, currently 2,800 gold on him, uh, net worth I should say. Demons is going to be looking for something here with Inflame. They do have the Blade Fury though. Omni Slash is available as well. Going to go for that one. Actually, this is going to be a bit of a problem. Already having committed this on the top side. They actually scattered it out with uh, Kaka. Can he get the relocate out of there? He's looking to maybe make something happen as he's going to be in the area, has procced it now, mm. and here's going to be the jump away. Oh, oh Hex. they got him. He's a Really fish. well played, but now how is going to be able to walk away from this one? So, ostensibly, it's the same thing. <laughs> uh, to an extent, I actually feel like if the relocate had gotten out successfully, that there's a chance that Newbie are able to keep not only keep the Wisp alive, but maybe turn it. Like, yeah. they bring the Juggernaut and Wisp back at full HP, the Disruptor and the Bat Rider rotate, and you have a fight. But as it stands, it is just going to be the, the Wisp going down, and that's still something that Sita could take away from it. So, not not the worst. Well, there's the pullback onto Ame. Silence everything dropped down on top of this Medusa, and does get the Stone Gaze off, but... Oh, no, 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 no. Mana, mana. Uh, popped it and tried to hit it, but wasn't quite there in time. So, Medusa drops... She is still top of the net worth, so there's some silver lining to this cloud that's uh, sort of in the, in the, in the CDEC youth squad. Yeah, but she's just going to be turning it into a maelstrom right now. It's good for kind of split pushing, clearing out waves, and, and trying to, to do his own thing on the map, similar to what we were seeing him try to do with the Battle Fury Anti-Mage. But end of the day, I think that he's still going to be very vulnerable to relocate. And he's going to have to stone gaze TP every time it, he sees it. All right, well, Kaka is silenced, but you also have the walk back in. K Phoenix is going to be there trying to stack up these cools onto Inflame. They're chasing after Victoria, and Ali actually also have these spirits hitting onto Inflame. They, you just need to be so careful. I, I always feel like this is the thing. They, they try and go in and make anything happen at all, and they just don't have the damage they need. Yeah. So it's going to be, right now, Newbie taking control of the map during nighttime, which is obviously a key phase for Aesthetic Youth, trying to bring the map back. And we are just going to see you know, Bristleback farming some Ancients here, no problem at all. I'm going to be going for the Mechanism here. Now, Mechanism is an item that essentially Bristleback can only go when he has a Wisp with him. The mana just really isn't there, especially against a Wex Invoker. The mana is not there, unless you have a Wisp buddy at your side. So, going to see, like I said, Stick, Bottle, Arcane Boots from Kaka, Bread and Butter uh, in this kind of situation. And I expect, yeah, Twan's also going to have the Arcanes too. Hmm. So, it is going to be those two heroes that are going to be essentially uh, these... Heroes to just dispatch mana whenever it is appropriate. This is not a situation where you can just use your arcane boots on cooldown. Yeah. Well, we talked a little bit about the disdain that we had for the Lincoln's Medusa. It does seem like Ame is not opting to go for that strategy. Instead, a lot of these camps were stacked up, has the Maelstrom available, as well as the Infused Raindrops, which I think is kind of a cool little item. It might help in terms of being able to stop the ganks from coming in, at least to a certain extent. Uh, what do you think about these item picks up for Medusa? I Well, I just thought, oh, maybe jump bottom. Okay, just making sure. I actually just thought of a new thing to test, is whether or not the Infused Raindrop's 50 damage requirement 
comes out uh, before the mana shield mitigates it or after, hmm. because if you can block only the highest caliber of nuke damage, yeah, that could be theoretically like such an insanely valuable uh, pickup. But all the same, it is going to be right now just uh, them holding bottom while the Medusa farms towards her jungle. And I don't really see her getting out of the jungle anytime soon. Like she's got a lot of camps to work with. If you look at the Radiant Observer wards, they're they're covering the area. Okay, they yeah. they are making sure this <laughs> these spaces are on lockdown, with the exception of smoke. Oh, well, unfortunately, Victoria still caught within it is maybe gonna be able to walk away from it. No, okay, there's a glimpse on back. They do have the kinetic field force staff forward and just gonna get pushed all over this place. With the glimpse, with the force, with the, the flame break, it, it hurts to be a night stalker. It certainly does, and at this po point, just Victoria is falling further and further behind. This four-position hero that was given a huge gift in Iron Talon. Oh, God, Ame, they are able to get off the Stone Gaze, but now in the midst of it, K Phoenix is starting to stack on up the damage. They are almost able to bring down Kaka, and he is going to end up dropping. They also have the wall that's been placed down. How is going to try and retreat for the moment. You also have K Phoenix, who's getting his mana drained, and is going to try and look to retreat as well. So realizing the inherent danger of their situation, Newbie back out, but CDCU, they can take that as a win. Yeah, I mean, they're, they obviously, they were able to save the Medusa from a, a glimpse play. They were able to get a turn kill on the Wisp. It doesn't really give them much back, and nighttime is about to run out here. But at the same time, at least the, the worst case scenario didn't happen. So I still think that Bristleback is a really good hero for fighting against Medusa because you never have to look at the stone gaze there's no incentive there's no reason yeah. you just kind of run past and then keep your back turned so in this case i think that that's a pretty good matchup for newbie as a whole but at the same time it is still I, the, the minor victories that c deck youth have to take stock in because that's all they're going to get right now well it is starting to look like eyes are on this uh, tier one tower in the bottom lane how has already completed his battle fury and does have what could be potentially that first item of either the Fusal Blade or Manta, depending upon which way he wants to go with this one. Uh, we do also have a little bit of pressure that's being applied by CDC Youth, so it's not all bad news for them. They're at least starting to deal damage to these towers as they're able to push out those creep waves. And, um, you know, I, I think that given the, the place that they've been put into with this draft as well as the play, oh god, Ami's just going to get jumped on again, though. This is the problem. Like, relocate into the silence. Uh, TP away, but the Flame Break is going to stop that mess. And yeah, she goes down. There's just very little you can do about that. If the Boo is within lasso range of you, you're probably going to die unless you have everybody ready to jump, to turn it, and to, to change your fate. Because right now, Cedic Youth, they're, they're scrambling for their own farm. Like, Inflame, desperate to you know break the 5k net worth mark here 17 minutes in just because it's been that kind of a game for him. He's yeah. going to get the drums, and that's going to be something, but not a game changer by any stretch. Just uh, hoping that this mass movement speed build will you know, get him in the right position that he needs to be. But in the meantime, a critical uh, time hit for C-Deck Youth where uh, yeah, just going to go in YOLO. Like, yeah, why not? Victoria is there. I mean, they do end up getting a really nice combo, but there's going to be the Omni Slash that chases. XZ is going to get glimpsed back again. They have the Vicious Nails Lagoo. Vacuum Wall is going to bring Kaka very low, and it is going to end up popping that Wisp. But they still were able to get a double kill there on K Phoenix. And... With the creep wave pushing in, it might be time just to say say goodnight to that tower. I would say this is one of the weakest times for Victoria right now because he popped darkness right as nighttime was ending just to try to limit vision. And it's been this entire stretch of his ultimate, the full 160 seconds that it's been essentially daytime. Well, at least 90 of those seconds. So what the result right now is Night Soccer, impotent, Medusa, desperate to find farm, and uh, in flames so far behind. It's just in a position where the only way you're fighting is if a newbie are hyper overextending. And soon enough, that won't even be a big factor because K Phoenix is tanking up. And you got Ame right there. Just uh, wanted the farm so badly and wasn't going to be able to get it. They are going to toss on out the EMP tornado combo. And unfortunately, it doesn't end up hitting onto them very effectively. Mu has a regen rune, which is now going to be popped. And it's on to Roshan. They are still in a little bit of a scary spot. You know, we talked about the fact that you can never really feel safe against this lineup. Uh, but that being said, with Wall down for another 29 seconds, they still probably can do this pretty effectively. And uh, they're going to end up backing out on the side of Newbie. Hmm. 
Actually, rather surprised that the that How doesn't go for Manta before Defusal Blade. It just seems uncharacteristic for him, where How is all very set in the way he wants to build his hero up and of like phase battle fear, phase battle fear. That's what you'll see pretty much every game from him, uh, d whether the tempo is slow or fast. But now going Defusal before Manta does restrict you a little bit because you are going to be a little bit more vulnerable to things like crippling fear. Um, you're going to have a significant lack of durability. You're reliant entirely on K Phoenix's mechanism. I just think that there there should be a little bit of fear for how until he gets the next pickup. It's not far because he's farming fast, and they're about to take Roshan most likely. But we'll see what Ame can do about that. Oh, there we go. Oh, bashed by Roche. No, Ame. It shouldn't have gone like that. And there's the Omni slash down, and that Diffusal Blade coming in handy as it does look like Medusa is gonna end up dropping so much damage coming out. The only person that's relatively low is gonna be Kaka. They're actually gonna be able to glimpse on back a second time. The uh, Night nice oh. Soccer and a quick easy kill there. Demons actually comes out a little bit better for that one. Um, and the TPs away are going to mean that they're not going to find any more kills, but they at least get Kaka. Yeah, the feed is real from this Wisp. Come on, man. You are you are 66% <laughs> of your team set. You are two-thirds of the problem right now. Come on, Kaka. No, he's taking it for the team, doing what he can in this situation, but it, it kind of it gets a little bit annoying time and time again that this keeps happening to you and, and not even being able to finish up like the Urn of Shadows. So it, it works because Schwan obviously loves to play the, the four position where he's able to do more with his items. But Etherlands might be a, a little bit of the wrong way to go because all the range increase for Disruptor Spells is very important. Not necessarily on Glimpse, which is already massive, but getting the longer range on Kinetic and Static mm. will enable even more AoE combos and, and more potential to disrupt Cedic youth intentions. But I feel that disassembling Arcane Boots is actually always a mistake in this game. Yeah. Just maybe build up the Ether Lens naturally and have even more mana to work with, but keep your Arcane Boots. You're so desperate for the mana. Yeah, I would completely agree. And that's something that I feel like I find a lot of times uh, is that you know you really do still require that ability to, to spam on out the, the arcanes to heal you back up and this just flat static mm -hmm. uh, man increase isn't quite enough. I, I will say again, I as much as we talked about the way in which Invoker could have possibly found kills in this game, um, it, it does feel to me like there was a dissynergy in the draft and it's not necessarily just on him hmm. as we see this go out that you talked about the, the timing of the Aghanim Scepter on the Night Stalker it doesn't really feel like they're pushing for that late game timing. They do get a really nice stun there on the Moo, and it looks like he is going to end up, oh my god, is he really going to survive this? The oh! Kaka is there to heal him back up. It's like nothing happened. K-Phoenix is in the midst of everybody. Nobody on Nubi has died, and they're going to start bursting through these heroes. Ame does pop the stone gaze. How is turned on the stone as well, but she's now eventually dead, and K-Phoenix, he is just too big, too bad. He's got too many quills to deal with this. Victoria oh, dropping low. So much damage. Moo is going to... Uh, he ends up going down. Kaka not quite there to save him, but that's one out of four, five rather, four left alive, and they pop the glyph. But what's the next play here? I mean, who needs mana when you've got yourself a Crimson Guard? You can continue to tank the tower. You can continue to keep damaging it. And it's not until respawns that they're even the slightest bit concerned. They'll take the tier three, but they have to back off then because even with the Aegis, that'll be the worst fight. Oh, they relocate back home. Are you gonna buy back on the bat? Are they trying to end it now? As a possibility. They're gonna, I think they're going to buy back on the bat. Uh, four, three, two, one. Okay. Uh, Lion just killed off yeah, Disruptor. Well, this is a misplay, for sure. All right. Well, they come back in with a lot of regen. K-Phoenix is now out of mana. I'm not exactly sure what the idea was so there. So if you tether somebody and bring them back to restore them from the fountain, you bring them back, then you immediately overcharge and retether the other person, that's three people brought from no mana to full based on fountain mechanics, essentially. But he didn't tether somebody, so the only explanation I have in my head is a buyback play, where you buy back on the bat and you bring him with you, because you know once Wisp yeah. is in the fountain, he can only bring one hero back. He's not going to leave a jug or a bristle there. So because Kaka didn't tether on the relocate, I assumed it had to be a buyback play, but uh, there's just no incentive for that. So instead, they just end up feeding away the Disruptor, could have been a very simple walk away disengage, but yeah. Don't Do we have fancy. to keep things interesting? Maybe double tap to R. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, we're going to be seeing the movement on over towards the top lane here. You have uh, the Invoker is looking for a kill, seeing if he can find somebody, but realizing that inherent danger of the situation, Moo is going to back out and not going to be caught unawares this time around. Disruptor has been able to respawn now. Aetherlands completed and. 
as we were talking about earlier, finishes off those arcane boots. So it was a little bit of a scary situation for a moment, but all is right in the world, and it looks like Newbie want to try and run down his bottom lane yet again. Mechanism, Crimson Guards, this tanky is all get up. Yeah. It's more annoying than anything else, just not being able to cast your spells. You can v essentially view being out of mana as a permanent silence. Mm. You just don't have spells to work with, and with the exception of uh, certain heroes that just don't care. But, yeah, we're going to see that push through. The Aegis is not going to last much longer here, but it should just be enough to do the job. They've got one minute on it. How will Frontline here? K-Phoenix is going to be pretty confident himself, and they're just going to hit the racks until the c -Deck Youth are forced to respond. Seeing if they're going to be able to get it. Unfortunately, it's not very easy to fight into this type of lineup here. Again, some of the Mjolnir procs, they also throw out the Earth Spike. How? Dropping low. Can they time this absolutely perfectly? Actually, going to be able to get a lot of damage on K Phoenix. He needs uh, to mana. back out for the moment. Uh, okay, they're bringing it back in. Tons of people in Stack Storm. Actually, ends up only being Ame. Now they get the vacuum wall onto three. Newbies still are able to survive Ooh, this through this. K Phoenix is going to start to be able to get all of his mana drained away, so no more quills for the moment, at least. Now they're thinking about reinitiating as Kaka is what? still there. They are uh -oh. going very far. He's under for is this going to be the play? Oh no, in flame. Oh, that was not the play. And now you don't have an invoker. Buyback status is available, but if you buy it at this point, what are you even going to end up trying to do? They're going to buy back now. They have been able to catch on to this Bristleback, but he's still just so freaking tanky. Chuan is going to die, so they have found him. Already used the Static Storm. They're able to dodge away from that Tornado. Aegis actually has now expired, and he might think about going back in. BKB has popped. He's pissed off and going to start hitting away onto Ame, mm. taking away all that mana and starting to take away that life as well. Vacuum Die through. Back. This is too much to ask for him at this point in time. And now Howe is going to continue his rampage. Victoria gets taken on down. Unstoppable streak for him. K Phoenix hits them in their own base, and I don't know what they got left in the tank, but it certainly isn't much. Juggernaut just shoot through almost all of his defusal charges in oh, one fight, just spamming and killing. They force out all the buybacks, and even then there's no retreat. They are relentless here. <laughs> Newbie know what advantage they have, and they will take it all the way through. Not even a 26-minute game, and we're going to be seeing Newbie take this series 2-0. 25-9 to with just brilliant execution across the board. I, I was a little bit worried there when I saw K Phoenix solo because I know that a Bristleback is going to be shut down in that situation, mm. but they had the comeback where it was, okay, well, Bristleback will be shut down. He'll be like level two or three, way beyond when he should be, but by creating space elsewhere, by forcing the supports of C-Deck Youth to rotate away from the bottom lane, Bristleback will get his solo experience. Again, not contesting the lane, but still getting levels. So he gets level five, level seven, goes to the Ancients, and gets his comeback that way. So just... In general, Newbie had a very clear game plan. It, it featured the jungle a lot, uh, you know, the Batrider stacks for the blink, the Bristleback stacks for his, his full resurgence into the game. And I feel like they played this one really well. They're, it wasn't flawless by any stretch, but it didn't need to be the way that they were able to just ramp up the tempo and, and go with only one rush on. I expected to, but here we see C Deck Youth struggle to really hold the line. I'm, I'm not going to blame it on any one thing. Uh, they just, they are having trouble really balancing out the greed with the ability to actually justify it, I guess, is, is yeah. the best way to describe it. They aren't finding the items they need. If, if they find the Scotty, suddenly <laughs> C-Deck Youth are in, in business, you know? Yeah. But it's just, and the Evoker got shut down. Medusa got nearly free farm and still didn't get the chance to do enough because this item needs so much. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it just felt like there was that moment where they were waiting for it to tip back over and it didn't end up working for them. And, you know, newbie, they smell blood in the water. They start pouncing on it like sharks. This is going to do it for us, at least for today. China qualifiers are going to continue tomorrow. I think there might be still one more game that's going on, but Europe and Americas are going to start taking over, and we're going to have to vacate this spot and let them take over that as well. So thank you so much for sticking through it with us. It was an absolute pleasure casting. Again, one last time, Blaze Lyrical. Be back tomorrow.